Hi, I'm Mario Evan, and you're listening to Talk Trot, a weekly inspire edutainment podcast discussing the things that most people are afraid to, but from a Jamaican perspective. From relationships, sex and sexuality, to the ins and outs of entrepreneurship, in this space we speak about almost anything with the intention to inspire, educate, entertain, and create a fair and balanced space where your truth shall become your power and set you free. Welcome to episode number 54 of Talk Truth and I'm your boy Mario Evan and today is a special episode because I'm bringing in someone who supports the show which is always so cool to me and every season we have someone who literally is a supporter who ends up becoming a guest which is always amazing. Today I have a Jamaican woman who goes by the name of Yannick Farkerson and she hails from St. Thomas and there's so much more going on with her and today we're going to talk about her journey to self-acceptance. So let's bring Yannick in. Hi Yannick. Hi Mario. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome to Talk Truth and thank you for being willing to share your truth. Um, Yannick, tell us a little bit about where you're from in Jamaica and your childhood so uh, i'm from a little community in st thomas called roselle um if you're ever going to St. well portland that direction once you pass the waterfall coming from white horses it's the i think it's the first left turn so it's open to that little community. you mean that little waterfall that you can see from the main road yes That's it. So, right, yeah. so after you pass that waterfall it's roselle. On the yeah, left. on the left. I'm familiar with Roselle, yeah. So, um, I, so you I grew up there? there? Yes, I grew up there. That's where I was born, same yard. You born in the yard? Until, no, I was born in the hospital, but that's the, 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 where I lived. That's, yeah. where, that's where I grew up. I've never moved to another house until I moved here which was right. what, five, almost five years ago. And I'm here sure. is the United States of yes, America. Yes, the United States of America. I'm here, right. I'm in Ohio right now. You're yes. in Ohio. All right, mm -hmm. interesting. All right, tell me a little bit about growing up in St. Thomas. So what was your household like? You have a big family, you have a little family? I have a big family in a small house. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so it's very close knit. No, yeah. I never had anything that was specifically mine or individually mine. But, you know, growing up in a big family, it's good to know that you have the support. It's good to know that there are times when, you know, just to, there's going to be some little banter back and forth with, with relatives, whether it's cousins, brothers and sisters, parents, right. grandparents. But it was good to have that because yeah. I had, uh, there were different generations that I could learn from. So, How many siblings do you have? Well, altogether, I have 11. Altogether, right? Yes, altogether. I guess but, you're closer to some than to others for various yes, reasons, I, right? Yes, I am, <laughs> exactly. for various reasons. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly, but, we know the thing going on. That's the good thing. Yeah, we know it go in Jamaica, but yeah. So for my mother... I am the eldest daughter. Yeah. And I have an older brother. So right. I'm the I'm the eldest daughter of eight. And for my El father. Eldest daughter of eight, and you have an older brother. All right. Yes. So you are the second child then, technically. Yeah. Technically. Right. I have a brother that passed away before I was born. All right. So but then yes, you became you became you became you became the eldest at the part. Uh, yeah, at the point where he passed. All right, understood. No, but I do have an older brother, you know. Ah, uh, he's alive. Yes, I have okay. an older brother. <laughs> I have an older brother, and then there was another brother that was born after him, right. before me, right. and that's my only full sibling that I didn't get to meet. Ah. So, yeah. um, on my dad's side, no. So there's five of us, and I'm the oldest. I always wanted to be an only child, you know, but you know, that never worked out. Tough luck for you, right? <laughs> yes, 11, you can't <laughs> choose that one. 
can't would you say, it at all. Would you say that it was um, a religious family? What were some of the cornerstones? Kind of a family of a thing. Some families are rebellious, kind of non-conservative. Some are super conservative, very quiet, loud, you know, shouty, quiet houses, you know, passive aggressive houses. Loud. I'd say load house. Was Everybody a load had a load house. Yeah. Yes, and you kind of had to fight for your your how do I say it? You wanted if you needed to be heard, you had to yeah. be loud. Yeah, yeah. So that's how you got your space. Kind of, sort of. I but was, you don't was, seem like a loud person right now, based on these few minutes. <laughs> I'm a loud person. I, a loud person lives inside of you. Yes, you know, that person comes out when it's necessary. Wow. Yeah. I think, I think. Yeah. But others, like, people who knew me when I was younger. Because, you know, it's three decades of changes in a Mario. Right. I mean, right. I may not look like it, but it's three decades of, you know, traditions. Right. So, so I learned things. Along the I, way. I learned things along the way. So I'm the, I am this person now from exposure, from just learning things, different things. So well, well, we are definitely gonna gonna go through your evolution. So we're in we're in decade one, and yes, decade um, one. All right, here's what I'll do. Mm -hmm. I want you to define for me self acceptance in your words. So self acceptance for me is identifying your flaws, knowing what they are, using them to work towards your strength, accepting mm -hmm. who you are, and. No, not not apologizing. Unapologetically being you, taking the space, even if you have to stand alone, but accepting that you are that person. And sometimes, like I say, it will make you uncomfortable. It will, but absolutely. All right. Let me let me yeah. I I like that definition. Let me um look and see what I can find. There's one online. Self-acceptance mm -hmm. can be defined as the awareness of one's strengths and weaknesses, the realistic yet subjective appraisal of one's talents, capabilities, and general worth, and feelings of satisfaction with one's self despite deficiencies and regardless of past behaviors and choices. And I like that I added that on because your definition mentioned flaws, but I noticed you didn't talk about the, the beautiful things. The strengths. The strengths, yeah. Uh, well, yes. The strengths but maybe you didn't recognize hard. them in the beginning, eh? No, I really didn't. Yeah. I really didn't. I didn't think I had any, mm. you know, because especially growing up, I was always, I was told that my dad can fool fool, mm. basically. Mm -hmm. And that was something that kind of resonated with me for a lot of years. Right, but o one over the in, from the first into the second decade, at least. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I remember asking my mother the other day, um, what kind of child I was, mm -hmm. and she said, you know, I started talking at nine months. Um, I learned to spell a very long name. Right. And when right. I was two, I could spell my name. I knew letters. I knew things. So she said she knew I was going to be a talkative child. Um, I was ridiculed and teased for talking a lot because mm -hmm. I would <laughs> tell on people when I'm not supposed to. <laughs> oh, <laughs> why, why? I don't know. It happened, right? But, but you know, the innocence of a child, and I, I say this all the time, I would love to have the courage and the innocence of a child because when, mm -hmm. when I admire them and I see the things that they're able to say, it just makes me feel like... Why, why did I lose that, you know? That's because they're completely fearless. Yes. So I, 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 I wasn't allowed to be that child because right. given that I was ridiculed so much just from being so small, um, going through all of this, I'm here worrying, oh, somebody's not going to like the fact that I said this. Or right. Somebody's not going to like that I said that. Or what should I not say? Or what is okay? Or somebody gonna beat me? Or you know, like so, yeah. yeah, those are and and I don't like beating in a Mario. To <laughs> me, be honest, me, me neither. <laughs> right. So the so really and truly the labels start to breed quite a bit of insecurity. Yes. In in you is what it does. Um, did you connect 
your color, skin color, to being fufu, as you say. When you were growing up and the two came together, is that what happens in the mind, that the two become connected? So in your mind, do you think, because I am dark skin, I'm not as smart? Um, or not necessarily? I wouldn't say that, no. All right. There were two I, separate things. Yeah, I would more say that my dark skin meant I wasn't beautiful mm. rather than mm. not, not knowledgeable. Smart. Right. Right. Because in a way, you kind of just said that you were smart. You were spelling long names by undoing things long before. You were ahead of your milestones. You were right. ahead of your, your milestones as a child. Um, when was at hopping and skipping, but what were some of the things that made you start to feel that you were beautiful? Because that seed was planted early. So I can imagine that something would have to happen to switch you into a mode where you start seeing yourself as beautiful. So I used to always like to sing, you know, just sing little songs. And my grandfather, well, my step-grandfather rather, he was the first man who made me even know what it felt like to be loved. And wow. he would tell me, you know, you're a beautiful girl. Because I used to say, Daddy, you think I'm beautiful? And he'd say, yes, you're a pretty girl. You mm -hmm. know, but mm -hmm. this was around maybe like eight, nine. And he became my best friend. You know, he's still alive today. Okay, 96 wow. 96 cool. years old. Wow. Is he ja <laughs> is Jamaica? Yes, he's in Jamaica. Okay. Awesome. Um, And that do miss our relationships because we had really good conversations. But... To your question, what made me start to think I'm a pretty girl or a beautiful girl was through him. And, mm -hmm. you know, I thought you loved me, you know, because I wanted to feel that. And yeah. there are a lot of times when I didn't really feel that. So the validation him, was I, important. Yes, validation mm -hmm. was important for me. Still mm -hmm. is right now, kind of, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't really on. completely go away. <laughs> That's what yes. a lot of people don't realize about the scars. But as you say, you evolve. Yes. And you move to so, a new space with it. Mm -hmm. So, yes, if anybody had showed me any kind of affection, I can say, I can, without any question, say he did. Your step-grandfather, who is yes. 96 and still alive and living in yes. Jamaica. That's yes. wonderful. I mean, and, and just hearing that, I am going to assume that he's somebody who had well-adjusted views on beauty and probably lived a bit of life himself so maybe his perspectives mm -hmm. were a little bit different yeah. it's nice how god sends you some of these people in your life to kind of almost nurture you when you're kind of at mm -hmm. the lowest point mm -hmm. that's true you're eight nine all right so you went to morant bay high yes and um tell me about high school morant bay is co-ed right yes yeah. it's co-ed Mm -hmm. Well, high school, I don't even know. I didn't even know where I fit in. I was this dark-skinned girl with a lot of hair. Right. And I got criticized for that, too. It was natural? Um, no. Our process was processed. So the reason, the reason why my hair was processed, Mario, was because mm -hmm. my mother was a little aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she hope don't kill me. No, I was at all. Mommy, we still care. We still love you. <laughs> but she was very aggressive. And I got my hair processed like maybe three days before I graduated from primary school. Yeah. Because I really, I just couldn't bother with her. Uh, you, you mean just... with the cool many, I mean? She was yes. cool many Yes. Yeah, 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 we know. Yeah, she was in it. So so you did ask or she did say, make her straight well, this so thing. I have an aunt that, is living in the U.S. No, well, she's right. been living in the U.S. since I was young. Well, yeah. she offered to, you know, be the individual that will help me to maintain the process here. She had a hairdresser. So well, kind of. She, she, yes, she she <laughs> she was the expense part of it. Let's say that. Gotcha. All right, I like yes. it. Yes. Yeah. So she she said she would do it and she would ensure that i had all the products and everything to get my hair taken care of right. so because of that i say okay i'm going to go ahead and do this um went ahead when i went to high school there was this one embarrassing moment too they my uniform wasn't made right and for because it's supposed to have a flare it's a green right. tunic 
without right. flair. Mine Going never have no flair yeah. because who the person in charge of taking me to get it done had it done by a tailor when they're right. saying it should have been done by a dressmaker. Right. So my first, I guess, month of high school was a little embarrassing because I was ridiculed for not we were having the correct. You never have the flair. <laughs> Yes, I never have the flair. And because I never have the flair, it was like I was singled out. But I don't know if they pick the mean album in America, they will make it look pick children, can we get to see? Not the little one, them, the teenage one, them. Yes. Rough. So <laughs> yeah. the other thing is, even with summer school, I I never used to even just like a girl, you know. I I was like the one of the biggest tomboys. If you were to change all of that, but I was a tomboy. So yeah. being like that, it never really mattered to me. But being ridiculed by other kids and teachers, then, you know, I'm like, well, when, when can I do something right? You know? Right. So at this point of the game, you're not only teased about, you've been teased about your complexion. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned to me one of ways that we used to tease you about your, your forehead, as we say, your forehead, um, your uniform, and you're a small girl with a lot of process here. So you have no fear. Yes. I but remember, there's a lot of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. ahead. Yeah, no, let me know what you guys say. I was going, I was going to, to lead you somewhere else. I want to hear where you were going to teach. Mm -hmm. No, I was going, you say I was a small girl. I, I remember that I weighed 89 pounds. Wow. That yeah. type. Too. You look a, mm, you look a bit. So mm. I was small. And then um, in my classes, I was for first to third form because that's when they, you know, before you, you choose your right. vocation or whatever it is that you really want to focus on. Your first choice, right? Yes. So in thir first or third form, I was in the top streams. Um, and I didn't really see that as nothing, you know. I just thought, you know, I was so You're smart school. as well, so they don't like you because you're smart now. <laughs> I went to school and I did, I did what I th thought I needed to do. Right. My, even though... Even though they're all, there was always to me some dysfunction, some things in on the back end that would prevent me from not excelling, and I was. Um, yeah. I had fr I had a friend who I'm going I'm too bright. <laughs> she needed she needed my help, and she wouldn't ask me because apparently. I knew more than she knew. I don't know. I'm just assuming this now. You know, right. This is me and, assuming. and it made it made her uncomfortable. Yes. Clearly. Yes. So. Well, I but, I go ahead. Yeah. I was gonna say, but but there was a transition because, of course, high school means puberty, and you mm -hmm. hit thirteen, and some things started to change, and you're at a school with boys. So take me mm -hmm. through <laughs> this next phase of high school and and what was happening there in terms of self acceptance. Um, so I remember when, when, well, I never used to smile at all. Yeah. Surprising, surprising. No, surprising. It's, 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 it's like, now, right? it's one of my best features. That's what I always right. tell people. Right. But right. I never used to smile because I was so boggled down with all the things that were going on in my life, family right. situations. Um, so when I was in high school, Maybe around what second form. I yeah. distinctly remember I used to hang out with the boys. So I was hanging out, hanging out with that with two of my friends. And they say, Yeah, you know, if you smile, it would have do better for you. If you just <laughs> if you just smile. And they say, you, you you have a nice smile, you know. I'm like, really? I say if you smile, it can make you feel so much better about yourself. And these were right. guys that were was my age. Right, right, So, you right. know, the so fact that they... They had that insight. To, yeah, yeah that, that insight that killed cool. me. And I said, you know, let me try it. You know? And from trying, it started to make me feel good. Yeah. And I said, okay. And my teeth did not look too bad. <laughs> teeth didn't look good, friend. The teeth look like they have a good dentist. We don't know who clean them, but they look good. <laughs> so... I'm say, All right, yeah, the people you know, who are listening to this in audio are like, what are you talking about? Guys, you need to go over to YouTube and watch the video so you can see what Yannick looks like. You'll see her teeth so, there. With that, I say, All right, let me just go ahead and do that. And then I used to start looking in the mirror. And from looking in the mirror and seeing that I smile a lot, I started combing my hair a certain way that fits my face. 
Right. So there were my phases too of having a bang. I had I had bangs then because you're coming for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with that too, I went ahead and you know I I saw I kind of started to see myself. Yeah. And finally, uh, yeah. Seeing myself, then I there was this other guy that was attracted to me. Same. Same, well, same second form, but different class. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why am I like me? You know, for, first of all, he was, he had a very light, way lighter skin than me. Right, and I'm like, right, right. You know, I, you know, you know, I'm not the girl for you to be interested. Right, you, you don't really like you know? me. You're <laughs> you really brown like me, me. I'm be browner than me. He's like, like me. Lighter, yeah, lighter than you. L lighter than me, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so there's all. Like, so the, yeah, in your yeah. mind, it's also a construct of the fact that even mm -hmm. a brown skin boy wouldn't want a girl like you. No. Yeah. So I had that construct that they're only going to, and they're only going to like the lighter skin girls. Right. So when right. I was, was in first form, I had a friend who, she was lighter than me and she would get all the attention. All the, uh, yeah, all the yes. Like everywhere. Mm -hmm. Even everywhere. even even men who weren't supposed to be calling to us. Well, you know, yeah, yes. that's another thing too. But... <laughs> She was getting all the attention. And mm -hmm. then I know, you know, fast forward, go to third form. Third form no started to develop a little more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, pe people would men would see me as an African princess. And I'm like, why are they even paying attention to me? I don't even like boys. I don't even know if I, I want to. Man. But you have breasts now. <laughs> <It's very> different. <laughs> You're right. Really, really, really no, really they're seeing mm -hmm. they're seeing something and I'm still like this shy girl who ah, no, I don't think I want to do that. Yeah. But yeah. But, but still you, you would say that you you definitely had a different boost of confidence after those boys told you to smile yes. more and now you're getting attention yes. from yes. the opposite sex. Even the mm -hmm. lighter skin opposite sex, right? Even the lighter skin. <laughs> so they're now breaking down some of your own constructs. Right. And say, so, you know, I see you. That's yeah, what they're I telling me. I right. see you. I see you irrespective of how you see yourself. Mm -hmm. But I see you. Mm -hmm. So even so the smiling thing almost got me trouble, you know. Mm -hmm. I remember one of my one of my teachers came to class and he was a bit heavy set guy, tall and big. Mm -hmm. So some, he he would come into the class and he would say hello, but it's loud, right? So that's his way of getting our attention to just be quiet, right? But but the hello just trigger a laughter, <laughs> and I was laughing like crazy. And he'd say, "Yanni, you quiet that stupid grin off your face." <laughs> and I, that's when I just I'm died. Most of the team, yeah. After we don't start smiling more, take it away. <laughs> right, but. You know, I'm I'm surprised him never sent me a time class. Right. Because right. I couldn't stop laughing because well, I thought what he said hilarious. was funny. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was hilarious. I don't have that sidebar to say to me laughing, but that was one of the days when I realized, you know, people are going to be intimidated by the simplest things yeah. that yeah. you do. So yeah. you if you can own them, just own them and right. you'll be okay. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, in, did anything else significant happen in high school? I'm going to just, well, yeah, so, because so, I was going to transfer you to UA after this, but take me on so, a journey. So another issue that I had in high school was, and that's where I needed validation. Mm -hmm. No matter how well I did, my father would never tell me that, you know, I'm proud of you. That's something I always wanted to hear. Yeah. So I remember... When I was in first form, like I said, I'm in the top stream of all those three years. And he would see, I'd get like 90s. I always come first in a month. Don't yeah. know why, but it, it happened. Yeah. But I'd get like 90s in other other subjects, but he'd only see the position. And sometimes getting 90, Mario, I'll, I'll be at 20 in my class. Mm -hmm. And he would only see, oh, why you get this? And why are why are you at this position? He'll never right. see like you're getting never good grades, you're out. average. Yes. Yeah. So I remember once when I was in third form, 
I was second place out of 200 and something. I think the entire, because they, they rank you based on your grade, your class rather, and then they rank you based on the number of people. Right, exactly. In the year. So I mm -hmm. was ranked. I saw that I was ranked number two in my class and number two in the year. Wow, yeah. That I thought I had accomplished something great. Yeah, because each class would have at least a double 40. figure. Maybe 40, right? And yeah. how many how many classes in a form? Like five, six. So they spell Morant. It's spelled O M O R A N T. So, so that's six. And, yes, so that's six times four. 240 kids maybe in a year. And yes. you were second in out of 240. All right, so this is significant, but. <laughs> well, yes. So take it. So I was happy. Yeah. My mother, she wasn't the kind that is going to criticize me because she said she knows my worth. She might not right. say it in so. She never know if you really express herself, but she not knew. really create excitement, but not. No, really. but she knew. She know you're smart. Mm -hmm. Right. So I took it to my father now, and after taking it to him, he. His response, that's good, boy, should I come first? Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Mine, mine, that's too funny. Mine weren't a lot like that, but but the, the other elements existed. And it's a feature of Jamaican parenting, you know, and yes. Caribbean parenting, where I think everybody is so used to working hard. Mm -hmm. Nobody going to really make any excitement if you do good. You have to be the best. And if so, you're not the best, then it's just average. That's kind of weird, but it's true. It's true. And not everybody, not everybody have a thick skin, you know. No, sir. <laughs> and he, I'll feel happy about the report. And you say, when I see him and him yeah. go through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm deflated. Deflated. Yeah. I feel like you never do nothing good. But <sighs> retrospectively, mm -hmm. would you say that? that kind of parenting style for us as Jamaicans that it helps us sometimes, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. Because depending I on your personality, you can either want to do better the next time or be more deflated. So it depends. I, I, did, I just did what I, I didn't know to do any better than I was doing. Exactly. Exactly. Because, and like I said, there were other things. There was this function. My mother and father didn't grow up. Um, I didn't see them together when I was born. Right, right, right. So right. I had to be back and forth between the two of them. And when things would be said about my mother by my father, I didn't like that. While when things would, my mother would care less. Right. right. So, so you kind of end up being know, in the middle one. In, yes. big people, in big people relationships. In, in big people yeah. circumstances. Mm -hmm. As if it's my issue. I'm already yeah, trying not, to be yeah. a child. And, try <laughs> and to figure out your life. And come first. Out of 240. And then these people are going on. Yeah. I know. And that I thought was unfair. You know. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying not to be hard on me. But recognize. When I do good. And if you're going to criticize me. And tell me. Say, you know. You should have do this. Tell yeah. me afterwards. Not right. tell me when you go through the report and I say what you need to say. Tell me afterwards. But I, I hope you, I always like to say this about parents, so I hope you also appreciate that they were doing the best that they knew how to at that time. Yes. So, I, I, I yeah. It's, yeah. it's no, I, no. Right. When you're going through it, you're like, what is going on? In retrospect, no. you're like. Yeah, no, I was like, they are doing their best with what they had at the time. What we, they had and what they knew. Yeah. What, yeah. And they thought that what they were doing was right. So Exactly. 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 I've grown to forgive. And yes. I do ask questions too. Because I need to know like what, what was going on for you? And why did you think you needed to be like this? So I right. do ask questions. That's bold of you to, to seek clarity. Because seeking clarity will also... Help you develop greater self acceptance too, because at least you know the reasons. Yes. Behind no certain reason. things, right? Because you may have had a different idea of what it was, and it really yeah, wasn't. I just felt unloved. Exactly. And a lot of times we go through life not really knowing the reasons because people don't share them because of their own insecurities and their own fears mm -hmm. of sharing them. But you felt unloved because you're doing your best, but still it's not good enough. And to add another thing is, the parent that is paying for you to go to school. Yeah. Wants, can never say, 
I'm proud of where you're at. Yeah. Can yeah, never right. say, I see what you're doing. I'm proud of it. I would like for you to do better. But I am proud but of I'm what happy with what you've done, right? Yes. And and the connection between the hand that um <laughs> supports the, the, the school fee and you being the student is a deep connection. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that that was my teenage brain processing that. Yeah. So tell me about moving from Morant to U.S. So you come out of St. Thomas, you go over to Kingston. Are you commuting from St. Thomas to Kingston? Are you a hall girl? You live in town? What's going on? So I guess I didn't do much in school. So when I applied to hall, nobody took... And when I said didn't do much, like extra curl, right, extra right, curl right. I, I, was only, I was only in one club going to high school. Just right, one. right. So... Um, when I applied, I didn't get in. So here's mm -hmm. here's how the journey started. I I remembered we were having career month or something at school. Mm -hmm. They came, they gave us the applications because our our six oh six, they gave us the application. We applied. A group of us, you know, got a car to take us to U E so we could take it there and pay for it, pay for the okay. application. Mm -hmm. When I pay for the application, my parents don't know this. Neither of my parents know this. Nobody knew I wanted to go to UE. I don't I you, think that's the you, only you, think... Yeah, you just assert out your life. You want to go UE. Yeah. And you try to figure out how it's going to work. So no, we yeah, pull out the application, pay for it, come back. Um, I applied for law because that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I applied for Carmack and I applied for something. I can't remember the other thing, but those were the two things I wanted. And for foreigners, Carmack is journalism school and Hall is like living on the dorm. Yes. So those were two. So law, journalism were the two yes. or two of two top were ones. two of the options. Mm -hmm. Um so after doing the application and I got in, I went to tell my father. He was like so who would that I go be for? <laughs> <laughs> which makes sense that the man concerned that you're gonna go big big school in at Kingston. Who is paying for this university school fee, which is more than a school school fee? Is that it's a legitimate concern? Yeah. But yeah, that was so, his first response. It wasn't you're gonna try to be a lawyer, it was who's paying for that? Yeah, because when I did get the, the acceptance letter, because I told him I applied afterwards, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I can't tell him that I'm going to apply because I don't know what the reaction is going to be. Right. They might stop you from applying or try right. to. Right. So I went and I applied, told him then we had to start the student loan application. So we did that. Mm -hmm. Um, with the processing waiting, got the letter back from I think I don't remember when we got the accept I got the acceptance letter to do literature in English. I was like, who do I get this? <laughs> Guess that's not what you wanted to do. And we know it, that's not what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. No, but it was an in. And mm -hmm. I think when you apply to law and you don't and they don't choose it, because at that time it was just 40 people being shortlisted when I applied. Yeah, very competitive. So, so given that it, you are going to be shortlisted and maybe I'm not the best of the best. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then they're going to put you somewhere where they think that, you know, you can try probably next year. Right. So I did my letters in English. The whole I, degree? No, I botched it. Uh, the was, first both, year. Oh, you just did that year. Mm, you botched the first, first year. First mm. year, I only, because we had 10 courses that we had to complete for the, first, mm -hmm. for the year. Mm -hmm. I think I only passed like six. Was it difficult uh, or you just weren't interested? It it was difficult. But I did live in Kingston, you know. I live so like yeah, maybe no. Yeah, I was I could take like a taxi because I live in on Wellington Drive. So I live oh, so very you close. In, you were living in Kingston, all right, cool. You were near yeah. to school. Mm -hmm. I was very close to Yui. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, I think I feel like the connection I had with poetry and prose and yeah, all these yeah. other things. This it wasn't just, it. <laughs> this wasn't it, it. It never worked out and it showed. It right. Showed. So then I, well, one, I started going to church. So my mm -hmm. friend that I was staying, um, I was staying with, because I, I lived with uh, one of my former one classmates 
from high school. So I was staying with her. And I was talking to her mother, and her mother said, you know, Yannick, I think, have you ever tried applying for psychology? Right. And I said, you know, I never really thought of it. But I was low-key giving advice to people long time. Because I had this care for people, and I had this care for just reaching out. And and, and trying to build people and help them yes. recognize themselves. Yes. And Don't know why. Yeah. We were, were, were kind of deflated and <laughs> and but have all these, you know. But Sometimes I want, that's I'm, exactly why, though. Yeah, because I, I want to see other people be like that, be right. strong in, be their, strong, in themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. So after doing all of that, I, I went ahead and applied. Mm -hmm. I got accepted mm -hmm. to the psychology. But given that I failed... And with student loan, I don't even remember what happened, but I had to take a year off school. Something happened. I can't remember what exactly happened, but I had to take a year off school. Oh, so student loan, if you're changing, if you're changing your major, student loan right. wants you to start paying back. Right, for the first one. Yes. So I couldn't switch majors. Well, I, I couldn't. You, without well, you starting could, you to pay back. Up, yeah, yes. right. mm -hmm. I couldn't start, switch without starting to pay back. So, so you had to take time off. Yes. I, to make some money. And I didn't make no money. I never right. get a job, Mario, throughout right. that 12 months. <laughs> I didn't. You were, trying, you were hustling in the streets, but the streets weren't paying you. No, you and know? then my father was kind of thinking that I was slacking off. Because you yeah. can submit so many applications. There's so many people who know what I'm talking about. Yeah, man. They Submitting do, they do. applications and you don't and nothing, get no way. I let me tell you people, the students loan bureau in Jamaica, if you not pay the money, then post a picture in the newspaper, which I'm sure they do all over the world. If they, People have different methods, but that's one of the things that happens here in Jamaica. So nobody wants their picture to be in the paper. <laughs> right. Oh, in wow. So, 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 mm -hmm. so with that, no... I say, all right, so what am I going to do? But then comes August of the next year, and I needed to start school. So I went to my dad, and I say, hey, you know, I want to go back to school. This is what I would like to happen. He wasn't so accepting, because he's mm -hmm. saying, why did I switch majors? I said, it was hard. And I realized... Fun. It wasn't for me and if and he was like why didn't you wait and apply again for law and why it didn't differ i'm like I, I said to him you know why are you saying this no you know why not try to consult then rather than telling me no that i need to i should have waited or i should have changed Right. They could, they could have, and they should have. Should have happened a year work. ago, right? right. <laughs> so I said, you know, I still want to go, and I'm going to try to find a way. So I talked to my auntie, the same one that helped me with the hairstyle, yeah, and she was willing to help to an extent. But with that, you know, when I asked him, you know, I thought to ask him because he has. You know, other kids too that needs the same kind right, of support. Right, 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 exactly. So him work out something, get to go back to school. It was paid. Well, first semester was paid for. So me now saying this year I need to go. I need to go to um. I need to go to do work and travel. Yeah. I tried it the first time. It didn't work out because the funds that was needed to do the work and travel it's it's a lot and i didn't have that mm -hmm. but i say you know second year nah go i mean i gotta do it so what i did know is i had to borrow the money I had to borrow the money to go to school so my first year pay for so a lot of difficulties because this time I have to be traveling back and forth. Right. Because the place that we had, I had to give it up. Right. I don't, I, right. Yeah, because remember I took the year off. 
Sa yeah, Sunday unranked. ng week. Ano, Trap? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, yes, thank Mario. I know. I mean, hey, this was in the past. It happened. <laughs> <laughs> we're not here now. So, is, you know what I mean? But so, yeah, we're on this. So, you had to give it up and you had to yeah, keep moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to keep moving. So you're back and forth now between St. Thomas so, and school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Back and forth between St. Thomas and school. And my dad say, you know, you have to live here. If you're going to go to school, you have to be here. If yeah. I'm going to do it, you have to be here. This is me at 20, 21. Right, right, right. This right. man got tell to me, I have to come. But anyway, and you already I, were living alone, so right, so you didn't really want to go back home. <laughs> right, so I said, you know what, I'm, I'll do it. I did it for a year. Yeah. Well, not a year, half of the year. I couldn't do it any longer because the expectations were too much for me. Traveling, doing schoolwork, and I come home, the expectation is for me to be cooking or doing other household other chores, yeah. which I, ca- I couldn't handle that. Yeah. And when I told him that I couldn't handle that, he, he made it seem as if I was being unrealistic. Because I would have to get up like five in the morning. Some of my classes were at eight. Right. So to get to my classes, sometimes I sleep on the bus, you know. Right, because you're sleep, tired. I, right, I slept on the bus going to school. So, then you can catapult you into another phase of your life. I no have, problem. I pushed you to... You're in the U.S. now. Yes. How did you end up in the U.S.? And I want you to tell me about self-acceptance now in a country where in Jamaica okay. it was colorism. But, I mean, of course, you're an adult now, so you're more comfortable in your own skin. But now in a country where you're black, <laughs> where... You're black. Yeah, I lived there for a few years. I know. Tell me about that part of your journey. How you end up in the U.S.? Or why did you move to the U.S.? And how did your self-acceptance change in moving to a new country? So after going to U.S., I started working at a call center in Jamaica. I was working out so well. So I had a friend here and, you know, work out, work out something for me. And I came here mm-hmm. to the U.S. Mm-hmm. So after coming to the U.S. now, and I was with, with this friend for a while, things never work out so well. So I needed a job. So I applied to get that job, moved to Colorado. Colorado is more, I think, is more accepting of Black people. Right. Because they have like a little community of Africans. So they'll see me and think I'm an African. Yeah. Of African descent, yes. Not yes, from the country, not, no. No. <laughs> but people would see me and think that. But imagine me coming from Jamaica, which is like always nice and hot, to going to an altitude of nine thousand feet. And cold, yes. And cold sometimes, yeah. And nine months out of the year, it is cold. So from there going there being associated with white people racism i felt it but it wasn't so in my face okay mm-hmm. well, give time um, for yes i i think if i was in if, if i was in other states it would it might have been worse it right? would have been different mm-hmm. and it was too then there was a white men who would see me and tell me they love my skin complexion Right. And tell me I'm beautiful. And right. even in if I have in extensions because I wear braids a lot, they would see me and actually compliment me. So that was, you know, that was different for me. That's a whole new level of the construct. Because now this is a biracial thing, right? Yes. <laughs> that, was, that was very different for me. And right. I didn't feel, I didn't think it was offensive. And it felt I genuine. It, it, it was very genuine. Yeah, and which is important, yeah. To not be accepted by your own and people telling you, calling you different things, black like tar or whatever it is. And to know that even sometimes in your own family. And I forgive the no because they probably didn't understand either. No, 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 right. But being and, and nor a- and nor necessarily was the intention deep seated. So so meaning this is what they're taught, this is what they express. But mm-hmm. when you're at the core of it, you're still family and they love you. Where there are people who have hate black men. 
Say that again. Well, anyway, I, can, I, I can't speak for them because I don't know what their intentions were, but I'm saying I feel like in Jamaica, a lot of that is learned behavior and that at mm -hmm. the core, you're still family and someone that they love. Yes. And maybe we'll take care of if you were in a bind. And I think there is deep-seated hate for blackness, which is a little different. Yes, that's true. That's they true. rub shoulders doing right now because there is there is some dislike for blackness when someone can say those things to you. So we can't deny that. And that was also a part of my life too, that I was introduced to skin lightening creams. Because I knew yeah. about them. I knew yeah. about them. I knew of them. But using them was never something that I would do. And I don't know. I think maybe I was at a low point in my life. I never really explored it. But I did try it. And yeah. then after a while, I was like, I don't you think any I changes? Did. No, I did see changes. It wasn't yeah. like extreme. Right. Because right, right. I didn't it want to. Yeah. I didn't want to be seen as a bleach bleaching. Yes. But you didn't want so, this light, they didn't want to smooth it out a little bit. <laughs> even I'm out like, the tone. Even out the tone, yes, that's a nice sound. Yeah, tone. <laughs> oh gosh. But but I'm glad you let that go to be. But as you say, it was at a time when your own um perception of self was not as strong as it yeah, could have been. I feel yeah. like I wasn't being I wasn't accepted the way I you were, I feel yeah. about myself. It it I don't know, it wasn't showing to other mm -hmm, people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they know you're in Colorado and there are actually people of another race in another country who are appreciating as you are. You are the funny story. Mm -hmm. I'm living right now. I feel like, and you're probably hearing me, but I feel like there's some issues here too, like in my current apartment. There's some what? There's, I don't know if there's some race issue or something, but. Oh, really? Yeah. But. When I just moved here, because I recently moved here, but when I just in this apartment building, that right, is, right. when I just moved here, there was someone below me that said I was making noise. But this would be just be, be, be me just walking. Right. And this girl came to my door. She came to my door. Right to talk to you about it. Yes. Okay, you were walking I, too loud. <laughs> Right, but but it didn't seem justifiable to you, right? So you're like something no. must, must be here, and right? She asked me like, "Why are you looking at me like this?" I said, "Because she's looking at you. Look at me annoyed." I said, "Because I am. <laughs> I am annoyed." Yeah. And she was not my color. Right. And I kind of did feel targeted because it's not yeah. the first time that she complained. Right. And I, I did say to her, I said, I think you're, I think I feel targeted. She's like, no, that's not what it is. It's just that you're loud. And I said, I just walk into the apartment. So I don't understand how you're telling me that I'm loud. I just walked in. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't, so, I haven't been here for a long time. Yeah. So, you know, it's. Yeah. You're not sure. And that's the thing about, about those things in the U.S. Sometimes it's very hard to tell and... what is real from what isn't real. And I'm not the kind of person. I never want to say that is the first reason. Right, exactly. I try, so you're not, I try right, to explore try to everything else before yes. you get there. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Because I'm, I'm yeah. not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to call the race card. That's not me. Nida, Nida, either race card is not top at top of our list, and I think that's because we're Jamaicans too. That yes. we tend to not think that way. But but when you start to see it more and more, you start to feel a difference, and you'll know when it really is. That, that's true. I guess this is. A big question, mm -hmm. uh, but to the people listening and viewing, how would you say you can develop a greater sense of self-acceptance now that you're an adult and much more comfortable in your skin? Wow. What, what, what would you tell someone who was eight-year-old you? Um, I would tell someone to be brave. Be brave. Regardless, you might get some lick sweet, but don't dim your light. Don't be open to ask questions and be curious. Right. Because only by being curious that you would really understand what is going on around you. I want to dig deeper on those two responses because I want to, I want to bring cl be clear. When you say be brave, what do you mean exactly? Be brave in the sense that even though you're a child, you still have a voice. 
okay. and use that voice. And when you because, link that to your context, mm -hmm. what would, what would bravery look like for you for me? as that child? Yeah. What what would bravery, you have said then, then if you had known better or known differently? If I had known differently, I would have probably questioned the adults why are you more. This? Right. Yeah. Why are you yes. calling me this? What does it mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What does what does all those things mean? And why you think you need to tell me that? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of accepting it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So be brave and be curious. Yes. And be where would you say you are right now in your journey of self-acceptance? <laughs> um, in my journey of self-acceptance, I, I think I'm probably 80% there. Yeah. And knowing that, just... knowing, right. Knowing that there's no 100%, right? Because it's right. always evolving. Yeah. Because there is always going to be some kind of changes. And my reason for saying this is, even in my job, I I present myself as this specific person who has an opinion. And when I say I have an opinion, I will speak my mind sometimes that it's, you know, it might take people off guard. Mm -hmm. But I, I make my opinions known. And even in my job, if I feel like the... I'll do my, I do what's required of me. Let's say that. However, if it is overwhelming, I'm going to say it. If there is something that can change, I'm going to say it. I'm making it known. Before, I wouldn't have said that. When, yeah. when I was younger, no, I wouldn't have said that. I know that for a fact that I wouldn't say anything. No, and I, I think this is also attributed to me being independent. Yeah. So being independent, it kind of takes away that part where someone would, uh, well, someone or whoever it is, is going to take something away from me that I have to, you right. know, Nobody can hold be mindful of. Their head, right? right. You, don't have to, you don't owe them anything. No. Right. So. All right, rapid fire. How do you feel about your forehead now? I think it's beautiful. I show it up now, you know, see? Right. No more yeah. bang. How do you feel about I, your skin? Oh, I think it's really great. I'm starting to wear makeup now, which I think is long overdue. And but I don't feel it's, be it's beautiful. But you see, I love blackness, you know, so I am like, I am so biased that I can't even comment on it. I just love everything black for me personally, but that's just me. But you oh, do yes, have beautiful sir. skin as well. Color aside, mm -hmm. you have no blemishes. It has a nice glow and a sheen. Like these are things people buy products for, friend. But I do have on makeup right now. You have on a little somewhere. Yeah. No, but <laughs> yeah. I I love my skin now. I yeah. I'm accepting it because you know it's it's what I was born in, and regardless yeah. of if I bleach, it's. And I stop, it's going to come right back, maybe worse, maybe worse than I expected. So, so knowledge I, power, right? Yes. So knowing and accepting, you can't get it. But also, we have to be grateful that we now live in a world that glorifies blackness a bit more, despite the fact racism, racism still exists. Yeah. The, the landscape we live in now is one where, where people are proud of, of their blackness. And my natural hair too because it's it's not it's natural right right yeah. right yeah. So, and what about the smile well we know you accepted the smile from high school so we, we my, best feature, <laughs> my best feature i i live by that i go by that stepping away from the physical continuing on a rapid fire mm -hmm. how do you feel about your confidence as a human as a yannick wow um I think now that I know a lot of things, self-development and all of that, it made me realize that I can only be me. I can't be anybody else. So I have to be my best self. And whatever that looks like, it may not look the same every day because, you know, emotions and all of that. But I am able to utilize a lot of the things that I've learned and accept that this can, this is me and I can't be nobody else. You can only be your best self and you can't be anybody else. Oh boy. Yannick, you have any final words for our listeners, for our viewers? Is there anything else you want to share with anybody? 
battling with um, self-acceptance? Well, what I can say for sure is it is a journey. Self-acceptance is definitely a journey. And if you have the right people in your corner, then your arrival to self-acceptance might be a little faster. And if you don't, try to find that one person that is willing to show you the love, you know, who is willing to to encourage the strengths in you, the little the part that you I apologize. No, that's all right. Somebody called? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Trying to touch it. Uh, but guess what? I remember where you stopped. Pick up from, actually start the sentence and say, find somebody that will acknowledge and think was what you said. But I don't even remember the sentence. You were saying no, find I someone was... who will love, and then you said find someone who will acknowledge. So just start from right there, and I'll, I'll edit up. OK. So I, I'd encourage them to find somebody that love them for themselves and who is willing to help to mold them into their into accepting who they are and knowing that you are beautifully and wonderfully made by God. Absolutely. And because you are beautifully and wonderfully made, um, God not make mistake. God not make mistake. No. So you are intended, yes. we huh? I was saying you're intended to be exactly who and who you yes, are. Yes, you're intended to be this person, and the people in your car now will help to mold you to be that best for that person. Yeah, that's beautiful, Yannick. I'm going to piggyback on that and just say, also find the time to question yourself and to find your truth and the things that you love and to love yourself. I always love to talk about the self-love, too. Yes. Self-acceptance and yes. self-love are yes. kind of very very much tied yes. together right? before you get to that yes. self-love because that's when you start accepting yourself but if you don't love yourself who's going to love you if right. you don't love yourself and you have to learn you have to and also try to have a relationship with yourself yeah because i think the best relationship you can have is with yourself and if you don't have that relationship with yourself then you are not going to be a good partner whether yeah, it's a yeah. friendship, yeah. whatever it is. It's going to be hard to relate to other people. Yannick, yes. where can people find you if they want to reach out to you? Because I'm sure that there are many little boys and girls who are going to hear um, this story and connect, and they will want to send you a DM of, I went through this too, or whatever else. And if you have any other projects that you're working on on social media, any other cool things you want to tell people about, feel free to share. <laughs> well. It's kind of just on, I well, I can be found on Instagram, Yanni, that Priscilla. Um, and that's the, the handle is at Yanni, that Priscilla. On Facebook, I'm Yanni Parkes, and I don't have any other social media. Right, right. Instagram um, and Facebook, right? Yes. Um, I did do a few lives just talking about... Um, life in general and how we can help to make our individuals better individuals for society and right, right. so i i do them when i find somebody who's willing to have that hard conversations and find out the solutions that we can you know come up with to make that happen and i do that okay. on instagram instagram sometimes so other than that i don't really do much <laughs> <laughs> i'm kind of <laughs> I, I don't think I do much. I'm just um, a just quiet Yanni. person other than yeah. that. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yanni, thank you so much again for your time, for your honesty, for sharing your truth. And I know that it will inspire somebody else. So thank you for being on I talk. I hope somebody learned something. 
I hope somebody learns something. Will. Somebody and I hope we can meet in person. I hope yeah, you man. and I can. I'm coming to Jamaica you now. I'm coming to Jamaica in April. After your, quarantine, after, after your quarantine, we talk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Annie, thank you. Thank you so much again. Thank you. And, you know, I appreciate this. I appreciate the opportunity. I'll I continue appreciate to listen. You coming on the show as well. All right, take care. Thank you. You take care. You just listened to episode number 54 of Talk Trot. And I'm your boy, Mario Evan. And you just heard the story and journey of Yannick Farkasin, a beautiful one, one about self-acceptance, overcoming teasing, overcoming personal struggles, overcoming so many of the obstacles that so many of us have to face working our way through lives, the various expectations that are placed upon us and how we eventually come all the way around to discovering what we want, what we desire and the beauty that lies within us. You guys know what to do. Subscribe, like, share. We are TLKTRTH, pretty much on all social media. The only things that are properly spelled out are our website, which is talktruthja.com and the email address, which is talktruthja.com at gmail.com. If you'd like to be a guest, there is a link in the show notes and it will allow you to fill out a form. You may just be like Yannick. And when I need guests, I search for that form. So if you think that you have a truth that might benefit someone, something that you do very well, something you're very passionate about, something you've overcome, something you feel vulnerable enough and ready to share, fill out that form, become a guest. And of course, leave a comment on Apple podcasts it really helps our ratings and how the podcast appears to the world i appreciate you and i know you appreciate me because you've told me so many times like subscribe share listen catch up and um thank you for always being here every sunday 54 episodes guys this is a blessing i enjoy these conversations i enjoy you listening Let's keep sharing our truth with the world. And you've just listened to Talk Truth, a place where your truth shall become your power and set you free. Until next time, guys. Peace out. Peace out.